Now let us go through some of the du'as in the Qur'an. And I made mention at the beginning of this session that if you have any problem, any sickness, go through the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He has made some powerful du'as. And it's amazing how when you see the supplications of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you will be amazed and shocked as to the types of sicknesses he has asked for protection from. As to a lot of things that he has asked, let us try to at least purchase a booklet or listen to a disc where the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are made mention of. Let's learn them, understand them, and try your best to use the same words. Though, if you were not to use the same words, Allah still knows what is in your heart. وَيَعْرِفُ سُؤْلَهُ حَتَّى قُبَيْلَ النُّطْقِ بِالْدَعَوَاتِ Allah knows your du'a inside your heart before you utter it. Before you say it, He knows better than you how to word what you cannot word though you want it that is allah that is the power of allah so if you are really stuck for words you say ya allah in my heart there is something ya allah you know it best ya allah grant it to me allahu akbar he knows what you are talking about now let's look at the quran i'm going to mention very few because you know we can't go through every single one of them the first thing we need to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to be able to thank him to grant us the acceptance and ability to be able to thank him. The dua mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Al-Naml, as well as in Surah Al-Ahqaf, different duas, one by Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam, and the other is mentioned as a dua that a man should be making when he arrives at the peak of his life. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya. وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ O oh Allah, grant me the acceptance or the ability to be thankful to you for what you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents, Ya Allah. And grant me the ability to do good deeds. Because if the ability is not granted, you won't be able to do good deeds. So Ya Allah, grant me the ability to do good deeds that will earn your pleasure and count me from amongst the pious worshippers. Alhamdulillah. And in Surah Al-Ahqaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي And Ya Allah, grant me piety even in my progeny and in my offspring. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant that to us. That brings us to the next dua. Always make dua for pious progeny and for offspring and for good children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to accept that dua from us. One is to have the child. There are some from amongst us who don't have children. May Allah grant you children through His mercy. There are some who have been trying for decades and some who have been trying for longer or shorter. May Allah grant you children through His mercy. Remember, if He has decided not to give you children, surrender to the decision, it is, it is best for you. Sometimes He knows if we were to give you a child, if the child was taken away then in a very bad car accident at the age of 5 or 10, then you might not be able to take that. So as a mercy, we don't give you the child from the beginning. Allahu Akbar. Sometimes Allah doesn't want you to see a child on drugs and on this and on that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give it to you from the very beginning. And sometimes just as a test, Allah does that to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us offspring. And may He grant us offspring who will be the coolness of our eyes. So let's look at the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Zakariya alayhi salam made when he was quite old and he still didn't have children. And this dua works. Believe me, it works. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. We are using words that worked in the past. Why would they not work now if we were steadfast as well? Listen to the dua in Surah Al-Anbiya. رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْنِي فَرْدًا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْوَارِثِينَ Oh Allah, do not leave me singular, Ya Allah. I need A's. Ya Allah, don't leave me singular, Ya Allah. You are the best of inheritors, Ya Allah. But I would like heirs as well, which means I need a male child, Ya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all offspring who will be the coolness of our eyes. So that dua is a powerful dua for those who don't have offspring. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word hab. Hab meaning to give a gift. The, ch the, the gift of children is actually a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another place Allah says, Zakariya alayhi salam made a dua. رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِن لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً Oh Allah, grant me a gift from you as a pious offspring, Ya Allah. Let that be a gift from you, Ya Allah. 
So we need to ask Allah in many different wordings inshallah and Allah will grant us. Then it is important that we always make dua that we get good spouses. And we also make dua that if we have spouses, Allah makes them good inshallah and keeps them pure and makes them the coolness of our eyes. That dua, we mentioned it a few days back when we were speaking about marriage. And I spoke about the dua in Surah Al-Furqan. Then we need to understand, let's also make dua for steadfastness and for salah. Let us, let us make dua that Allah makes us from amongst those who can establish their salah. And also make dua that Allah help your children also be steadfast and also engage in salah. Listen to the dua in Surah Ibrahim, which was made mention by Ibrahim alayhi salam, and it was answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salati. Oh Allah, make me from amongst those who establishes salah. And even from my offspring, make them from amongst those who establish prayer, Ya Allah. Imagine he made dua for his offspring. Then he says, Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Oh Allah, accept my dua. And this brings us to another point. Whenever we have engaged in any act of worship, it is our duty to make a dua at the end to say, Ya Allah, accept it from us. Not that we do an act of worship, we are happy and we walk away. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam after he built the Kaaba. After he built the Kaaba and he did so many good deeds, he says, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Oh Allah, accept it from us. This is a humble act of worship. Ya Allah, accept it from us. Make it pure. Do you know when we fulfill our salah, sometimes the sincerity levels are not that grand. Sometimes they are not up to the level they are supposed to be. Sometimes even the mere concentration is not there. But we ask Allah, Rabbana taqabbal minna. Ya Allah, these acts of worship, we are trying, Ya Allah. Accept them from us, Ya Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds. Then it is important that we also make dua for our parents. The dua for parents is mentioned in the Quran in many places. In Surah Isra, Rabbi Rahamhuma Kama Rabbayani Sawira. Oh Allah, have mercy on my parents. Have mercy on my parents, Ya Allah. If they are not Muslim, Ya Allah, that mercy would dictate that you guide them to the goodness. And if they are, Ya Allah, have all other forms of mercy as well upon my parents, Ya Allah. Because they are the ones who brought me up when I was an infant, Ya Allah. And they brought me up to this age, Ya Allah. Have mercy on them. Even those who've passed away, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on the parents of, from amongst us who've passed away. Then it is important that we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for knowledge. In Surah Taha, we have the verse, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being instructed to say, O oh Allah, increase my knowledge. Imagine. So he used to constantly say, Rabbi zidni ilma. O oh Allah, increase my knowledge. Every one of us, we need it more than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam needed it. There is the dua in the Quran, Rabbi zidni ilma. O oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us increase in knowledge, inshallah. Then, it is also important that we make a dua that Allah make our affairs easy. Listen to the dua in Surah Taha. Rabbi shrahli sadiri. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, grant me clarity of my chest, Ya Allah. Open up my chest for me. Make me confident, Ya Allah. Rabbi shrahli sadiri. O oh Allah, increase me in confidence, Ya Allah. Rabbi shrahli sadiri. Wa yassirli amri. And this issue. That this matter that I'm about to undertake, make it easy for me, Ya Allah. At any matter or upon any matter, we should be making that dua. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri. Oh Allah, make this matter easy for me. Whether it is a court case, whether it is opening the door of the car, whatever it is. If we remember and if we can, why not? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for you. As well as other important matters at work or at home, whatever it is. Rabbi shrahli sadri. Oh Allah, grant me that confidence. Wa yassirli amri. Make this easy for me, ya Allah. Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. That is a powerful dua, ya Allah. Take out the knot from my tongue so they can understand what I want to tell them. Subhanallah. Whenever you want people to understand your words, you make this dua. Ya Allah, let them understand my message, Ya Allah. Because we are weak. 
إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ اللِّسَانُ عَلَى الْفُؤَادِ دَلِيلًا The tongue has only been made as, as a means to convey what is in the heart, but we cannot do it all the time as good as we want to. Allah can help us to achieve that. So that is why we say, وَحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِّن لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ Ya Allah, grant us good speech or take out the, the lack of eloquence from our tongues so that at least we can be, express ourselves in a good way, Ya Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to help us express ourselves. That dua was made by Musa, Moses, may peace be upon him, alayhi salatu was salam. Then it is also important that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy, we ask Him for mercy at all times. And on top of that, we ask Him to make easy for us the path of goodness, the path of guidance. We ask Him to help us distinguish between right and wrong. Listen in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the youngsters, the youth who were worried about the bad environment. So they made a dua. Rabbana, they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayyit lana min amrina rashada. Oh Allah, have mercy on us. Grant us mercy from you. And make easy for us the path of goodness and guidance so that we can distinguish between right and wrong and we can remain protected. Do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? فَضَرَبَنَا عَلَىٰ آذَانِهِمْ فِي الْكَهْفِ سِنِينَ عَدَدًا as a response to that dua, we sealed their ears and gave them sleep in the, in the sleeper's cave for many, many years. Now, some of the Mufassireen make mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them from the bad environment by disallowing them from even listening to evil. So when you listen to evil, you will automatically go in the wrong direction. Don't allow your ears to listen to what is bad. It is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stay away from bad people to bad mouth, from bad words, from lyrics that will lead us astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us.